Destiny First Lesson, John chapter 11 verses 49 to 52, and one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Second lesson, John chapter 13 verses 18 and 19 I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that, when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Golden text, Matthew chapter 26 verses 14 and 15 Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, what will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. The Gospels of this holy week will clear your eyes about destiny, reincarnation and everything. They will make you realize that, of a truth, our Lord Jesus Christ is the one. What was written there is some hidden thing written about every person. If all the things written about a person are fulfilled then the person is the one written about. We do not fully understand the Bible. Everything written has a meaning. If you pray that certain things should not happen, how would the scriptures fulfill? He told Peter to sheath his sword, that he could ask his father to send him twelve legions of angels to fight but that if he did that, how would the scriptures fulfill? It was written about him that he would suffer and be put to death and he knew it, yet he did not stop it that the scripture might be fulfilled. Some of you always request the father to speak a word so that something would happen. The Father can make and unmake with His words, but if He stops anything that is supposed to happen to you, how would the scriptures or what was written about you be fulfilled? He knew who was to betray Him. It was written about Judas and it all happened so that He might be revealed. He says that heaven and earth will pass away but that not one jot of His word will pass without fulfilling. Anything written in the Bible which has not fulfilled must fulfill today, tomorrow or next year. The problem is that you neither own nor read the Bible. You buy all sorts of books except the Bible. You cannot assess any person through miracles but through what was written about him. Those who introduced the Bible to you told you that the writings are a myth but there was nothing to support what they told you. Refer to 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 17 to the end. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 17 to 21. You mistakenly think that Peter, Paul and others wrote the scriptures. God can use anything, goat, stick, air, anything he has created to accomplish his will. He used the staff Moses was holding to free the Israelites from their Egyptian bondage. Do you have such staffs today? He can pass through a madman or a six-month-old baby to accomplish whatever he wants. It was written about Judas in the Psalms that he would commit suicide by hanging and that he would swell and his belly would burst and lots cast for his place. Every word of God carries power. It was written in Jeremiah that he would be sold for 30 pieces of silver and that the money would be used to buy a piece of land called the field of blood. This was prophesied by Jeremiah and confirmed in John chapter 19. You do not do anything of your own volition. It had been written for you before the word was made so do not blame anybody for what they do. It was not however written that you should frown your faces. Everything our Lord said must come to pass because his testimony is the spirit of prophecy. It was written that when the Comforter would come, some would argue and reject him. It was written that many would be called but few chosen. If you are not destined to be one of the elects, fasting and prayer will not change what was written. There was the feast in Galilee where the mother of Jesus told the people to please do whatever he asked them to do. 
When she then approached him, he told her, Woman, what do you want with me? But because it was written that one should honor one's father and mother, he bade them fill the six pots with water. After the new wine was made, the chief priest said that it were better if they had had the new wine first because having been filled with the old wine, there was no space left for the new wine. Each pot of new wine contained twenty-four gallons and no one tasted even a drop. The Holy Spirit, the author and doer of all things, no one can explain the word of God to you other than the Holy Spirit. Who else knows the meaning of that passage about turning water into wine? It was the Holy Spirit that revealed the meaning of the forbidden fruit to the world. That was why it was written that the Holy Spirit would reveal the truth to us. The new wine means the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. The master of ceremonies at the feast did not taste of the new wine because it was not written that they would imbibe the new wine. It was not written that the disciples would practice or explain the word of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not testify about them but about the Comforter. The disciples were selected for selection's sake. If you claim that it is easy to practice the word of God, did the twelve disciples not quarrel and fight and struggle for position? Did Peter not eat strangled meat? Was there no division among them? Why were there twelve of them, are there twelve gods? Is Christ divided? He was an embodiment of the twelve powers of man and each disciple was a custodian of one such power. So one person had salt, the other pepper and the other oil and so on. The word says that they do not know the source of power in the brotherhood of the cross and star. You must walk the work of the Lord while there is still light. This referred to the time between his ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit. That period signified the period of darkness when all his disciples were killed. The 144,000 were killed in that period also. Revelation chapter 6 verses 8 to 11 states, And I looked, and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Did you know this? If I am to explain one sentence in the Bible it will take thousands of years and I will not exhaust what I have to say. That is why they tell you that your leader does not use the same Bible as they use. The plain truth is that no one understands the Bible save he who wrote it. The first lesson will now be read again. First lesson, John chapter 11 verses 49 to 52, and one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. He died to unite the entire world so do not ascribe any action to any person because he passes through people to pray, interpret, sing, preach and so on. Would you say it was Pilate or Judas that was responsible for his death? The tribes of Israel and the various groups of Jews, Sadducees, Pharisees etc. were not united and there was no other way to bring them together. Why he had to die Isaac had Esau and Jacob. Esau and his descendants had no share in this God. That was why he was called the God of Jacob. He had to die to bring together all nations, all tribes of the world. Pilate did all he could to release him but failed because he had to die to bring about the unity of all the nations of the world. If Pilate was to free him, what would have become of the prophecy of Jeremiah and others? Do you now believe that all is well? Do you now see that all things work well for those who believe in God? Everyone has an assignment to fulfill to the glory of God. The demons in some people are there for an assignment. If the demons were to be cast out, how would the people fulfill their assignments? He has overcome, so we, too, have overcome. 
through the sin of one the world was condemned and through him the world was saved. God told Adam and Eve that three things would signify his coming again, gold, frankincense and ma. He said he would reconstruct man, hand on the cross and his side would be pierced. These were all fulfilled in him. Why was there no other person to hang on the cross than him? He was killed so that the children of God all over the world would be gathered together. How did he die? It was not when he hung on the cross. It was when Abel sacrificed his fattest ram. Cain was Judas Iscariot, Abel was Jesus. Cain did what he did so that God's will would fulfill. Cain was not responsible. The Holy Father was. He is everything and we can never really comprehend him other than thank him always. Abel died and was referred to as the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. What was the significance of Abraham walking three days and three nights to sacrifice Isaac? The three days and nights signify the death of Jesus. When they arrived, Isaac asked for the lamb. If you look carefully you will detect some carrying forward between Abel and Abraham. When Abraham raised his sword he was asked to look round and he would see the lamb. That lamb was a carry forward from Abel's sacrifice. If Abel had not sacrificed that lamb, where would Abraham have gotten the lamb when he raised the sword? That lamb was Abel's ram resurrected. That signified the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take also Jonah. The fish swallowed him and after three days and three nights vomited him on the shores of Nineveh. Good and evil work together to glorify God. It is like a school where you have teachers and pupils. The pupils represent good and the teachers represent bad. The pupils regard the teachers as bad because they flog them or are harsh on them but in the end, the teachers bring them up. Your being slapped or beaten or tortured had been written for you. It was not and it is not the intention of the doer to do anything to you. Sometimes, what you plan is not what you do because God does not will it. I do not agree that there are accidental occurrences. God had ordained whatever would happen. The second lesson will now reveal to you that nothing happens by mistake. Second lesson, John chapter 13 verses 18 and 19 I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that, when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. How many pupils make up a class? How many teachers take up or control a class? Only one teacher controls a class. Judas came from the same tribe as Jesus and did everything with him and yet he betrayed him. Hold on to whatever your position is. All the tests we have are not temptations but examinations. If you do not sit examinations how will your teacher assess your intelligence? Before you even were admitted to the school, they had their syllabi, schemes of work and examination questions set. Think of the punishment you have to pass through from primary to secondary school and the university and you will find it is not easy. You have to befriend those who had sat the examinations to be briefed and also get past question papers. That was why Jesus said what he said. If he had not selected Judas as one of the twelve he would not have been the one written about. Take note that if you are made a treasurer you are from the tribe of Judas Iscariot. If you do not come from that tribe you can never be made a treasurer. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Woe betide you rich people, and yet you pray to be rich or come from a rich family. As soon as he chose the demon Judas, he started sitting his examinations, going from one tribulation to another. He says that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Those who are kept as treasurers are always in trouble because they are always tempted to take bribes and thus go to prison. If you know of any civil servant who has never embezzled or stolen money, bring him out. Civil servants do not regard stealing money as theft. Their policy is do not get caught taking or you would then be branded a thief. Judas never knew that his actions were meant to fulfill what was written about him. Satan put the idea into Judas to betray Jesus thus while at the feast Jesus told them that, one of you will betray me. When Judas realized that everybody knew what he wanted to do, he decided to shelve the deed. Jesus then reinstated the desire to betray him by dipping bread in soap and giving him to eat, and telling him, whatever you have to do, do it quickly. 
If he had not reintroduced the spirit of betrayal into Judas, what was written about him would not have fulfilled. Then, would he have been the one written about? You cannot escape the will of God. Pray that his will be done because only the king knows the secret of his kingdom. Golden text, Matthew chapter 26 verses 14 and 15, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. This reveals him as the king of kings and the lord of lords. He dressed like the twelve and unless someone pointed him out you would not know him from the rest. He said that he voluntarily gave up his life because a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. All the allegations against the brotherhood of the cross and star are to reveal the glory of God. There is nothing anybody can do to the brotherhood of the cross and star because the time for the indiscriminate killing of the children of God has passed. The Lamb of God has overcome the world and his followers have also overcome for they are counted faithful. This gospel reveals destiny to you. All what was written for any person must come to pass. Do not resist the will of God. If it threatens to rain, do not pray that it should not rain. If the sun wants to shine, do not pray for another thing. Do not pray for a male child or female child. Allow the will of God to manifest in you that he may be glorified. He that hath ears to hear let him hear and may God bless his holy word. Amen.